Very good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for the J July 18th meeting, Board of Education meeting. Uh, very quickly, I just want to read the open public meeting statement. In accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, I wish to announce that the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advanced notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the School District of the Chathams Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the time, date, place thereof posted in the Board Administrative Offices, sent to the clerks of the Chatham Township and the Chatham Borough, the Library of the Chathams, the Chatham Courier, and the Daily Record, and the Star Ledger. Mr. DeCola, would you mind doing attend taking attendance? It should be brief. Mr. Gilfillan? Here. Mr. Otter? Here. Mr. Rowley? Ms. Clark? Mr. Connors? Here. Mr. Sterling? Mr. Franz? Here. Ms. Kenny? Ms. Wright? Here. Five President Council, which is a quorum. Excellent. Thank you. Would everybody stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excellent. <coughs> Thank you again, everybody. Apologize for the delay. Um, we'll get right to it. I do not have any opening comments at this time. So without further ado, Dr. Lasusa, we pass off the baton to you. Thank you, Ms. Weber. Just two quick um, comments. The first is on staffing. Uh, we're almost fully staffed for next year. Just one or two remaining teaching positions that we are in the process of filling. Uh, we have a couple of appointments tonight for staff members who resigned very late in the school year. So we're moving along well in that regard, and, and we hope to be uh, all set, certainly by the next meeting, which is at the very end of August. And then secondly, I don't have firm enrollment numbers right now because we have many students in process uh, at some point in the registration process. Um, but we do continue to pick up students, particularly at uh, Southern Boulevard School. So we hit 100 students there in kindergarten um, over the past uh, week or two. So it's possible right now that new registrants to Southern will be directed for kindergarten to either Milton or to Washington Avenue School. Um, but I'm working with the principal on just looking at all options in terms of staffing and deciding uh, how to best proceed with Southern. But of 216 kindergarten students in the district right now, 100 of them are at Southern Boulevard School. Wow. Would that, if you make new registrants go to either Milton or Washington, would that potentially cause busing? requirements that's a possibility um, some students are there are students who go to southern who also are in fairly close proximity to Washington Avenue school where that we do new, have some new to the school well I just mean some residences so depending on where the homes are um, right no, no, located no. yeah I'm just saying I, is there an opportunity for a new newly registered kindergarten who is part of the hundred if they live closer to Washington to have them go to Washington and the new person who lives say up here on Lisa Drive yeah that we've discussed um, sending out a letter if we get to that point okay. to find out if anyone would prefer to go to one of the other schools okay. including Milton where we have space to okay just to avoid any busing additional busing expenses if, if or and putting a five-year-old on a bus mm-hmm um, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Can I have a question? Certainly. Since we're on the committee, if you don't mind, please. Sure, sure, sure. Mike, uh, Doctor, we're at 216 now. Where does that put us historically at this time? Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I meant to, I don't mean to blindside you with that question. I was wondering, with the kid, is it, I, I give no credence to the demographers and their reports. Yeah, I think, I think about a year ago, we were probably a little bit higher than that. Oh, okay. Um, about eight students higher, I think. Like at not this, much. yeah, it, we were right, and then we picked up another ten or twelve or fifteen or something like that as we got into September. Right. So the expectation is that we'll probably be around the same number that we've been, give or take, maybe three or four students. I think about the same as last year. Okay, I believe. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So that significant drop we keep hearing about, Rich, doesn't seem to be materializing no. again. <laughs> So much for the demography. Yeah, well, yeah. We also don't know what the number of kids are that aren't registering because they're going to full day kindergarten elsewhere. True. And we still have students who are in the in the midst somewhere. Or, you know, they, they come into the school, but they don't complete any paperwork yet online. So the school secretaries tell us that this many 
parents came in today and say they're going to register, but we haven't seen them in the system yet. Then we have others who uh, give us some portion of the application or the, uh, the the registration documents, but they don't complete it, so they're left hanging for a couple weeks. So we have a lot of people in flux right now. It's called hedging your bet. So that's it for me. Okay. And and the second grade is that holding steady? Second grade and first grade both have picked up kids at Southern. At, at Southern. So we added a section in first grade because uh, we have about 120 students right now. And then in second grade, we have close to 140 students. But that's another place where we have several families who have indicated that they're going to be registering, but then haven't moved forward, either because they haven't had a house, bought a house yet, or maybe they're buying a house and they're going to wait okay. uh, before they, uh, till they're all settled in before they register. So we're keeping an eye on every grade level at Southern is sure. the short end of the Southern story. Hot buttons. And that also puts the, um, the redesign project on hold indefinitely. Yes. Until we, okay. Okay. Did anybody else have any questions for Dr. Lasuso? Uh, moving on to the business administrator's report. Peter, I hope you have better news. Yes. Um, just have a quick uh, construction facility update. Uh, at the high school front office, HVA replacement project, uh, this con contractor is working on hooking up the, U the HVAC unit today and should be completed tomorrow. Um, we did have a little bit of snag with the controls, and last week they installed uh, temporary air, air units to make it a little more tolerable for the staff that, I guess, found it inconvenient to relocate out of the office to a different, different spot. So that is tempted to be all finished uh, soon. Uh, the Lafayette, uh, the Lafayette Southern Boulevard restroom replacement is going as scheduled. The demolition was all completed and the plumber is now working on the rough plumbing in both schools. So we're progressing there and scheduled to be done uh, third week of August. At Southern Boulevard, the PTO donation for the walking path, uh, path has been fully in, uh, installed and only the striping uh, needs to be completed before that's fully finished. And what, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last, what needs to be completed? The striping. Striping. Um, on, the, on the Southern Boulevard boiler replacement through the ESIP project, uh, the asbestos removal in the boiler room started today. Uh, we are doing the removal um, in a contained manner so the rest of the building can be occupied, um, as well as we'll have district staff and the township is still running there uh, camp down at the end by the gymnasium uh, without any problem during that work. Okay. This, the asbestos removal will take about a week and then the contractor will remove the boilers and then start on the uh, installation of the new boilers. Uh, the Washington driveway and parking lot, the borough started the work last Monday as scheduled and is uh, flying through it where they've got the new driveway and sidewalk uh, scoped out, the parking lot, all of the curbing is done. So they're progressing well into their schedule. Um, other than that, the district staff is uh, d making their rounds, painting of uh, the target of six classrooms at each building. Two schools are already done. They're into their third school starting this week. Okay. Um, custodians are cleaning the schools, and as normal, each school will be ready, you know, third, fourth week in August. Okay, excellent. And the, the snag in the controls, do you mean the thermostat controls or do you mean like safety controls? Like no, the, controls? the thermostatic controls. There was, a, there was a, an engineering glitch between the architect and the uh, contractor. Okay. It had to be straightened out. That's what caused the week delay or the 10 day delay in okay. getting the unit hooked up. At no cost to us? No. Okay. Other than the 10 days? Rather than the inconvenience of the staff. Okay. Mike, just back question to you. The 327. We're off one off of 281. That 327 will probably be what? By the time it gets to crash next year, you lose 25 kids to the private, or how many kids in the gain, or how does that work? T typically not that many. So 10 to 12? I'm looking at, no, grade 8. So we have a 327 coming out of grade 8, right? And that's replacing a 281. So that's an extra 46 kids at the high school if you just go grade to grade. But of that 327, <coughs> what is the number of kids that? Or we have kids that come back to Catholic we schools. Gain a, gain a few, we usually lose a two or three dozen. Or and then get like gained back from St. Vincent's and St. Pat's. Okay. Yeah. We gain a couple. Of, we lose a few dozen. We gain we a couple dozen. 40 plus at high school next year. Say that again? Pete. We expect up 40 at the high school next year. Probably. Something along those lines. Yeah. 
and then next year, we will. Next yeah. Two years. Yeah. The next two years. Or, or yeah, we're going to grow over the next few years, right, at the high school. That's the middle school buffer. Yep. Um, yeah, that's the bubble. But that's why we put the additions on. Grade 7, 372, grade 6, 360. Yep. Grade um, Any other questions for Mr. Dufault and any construction projects in progress? Excellent. Uh, moving on to committee reports. Uh, personnel has not met. I'm not sure when the next meeting is. Ms. Clark is out. Curriculum, Ms. Kenny is not in today and it has also not met since our last meeting. Finance? Same thing. Finance has also not met. Phil, thank God you're working. Uh, policy met this evening. Um, and the, <laughs> the focus. Mr. Connor said it's about time if you didn't hear him. The, uh, our summer, summer hours. Um, uh, the focus was uh, school calendars for school year 2017-18. Um, we did go over the survey results, um, and I think we uh, arrived uh, where we're going to be, but we're just tweaking that slightly uh, in terms of a couple corrections um, and addressing half days and early dismissals, et cetera, et cetera, with an eye towards the weather and unpredictability. Um, and then we went over our uh, uh, the second half of the mat, more of the comprehensive equity plan. So uh, that that's um, really nothing again uh, headlining there, just uh, more um, cleaning up the uh, the attic, so to speak. Okay. And should we expect to vote on the calendars our next meeting back after we get yes. them Absolutely. cleaned up? Okay. Yep. Which would probably be better if we have a, the whole board here. Excellent. Moving on to liaison reports, we'll start off with Mr. Connors in the borough, Chatham Borough. Nothing to report as related to the borough. Excellent. Thank you. Ms. Clark is not here. Athletic boosters, they didn't meet over the summer, correct? No. Correct. Uh, music and theater boosters, um, I'm going to read that one. The two summer music programs that are currently in progress, um, the summer arts camp is held at Chatham High School and String Fever at Chatham Middle School. Brian Conti is managing the camp at the high school and Suzanne Bass <coughs> is leading the beginning strings orchestra at the middle school. The Chatham High School Marching Band will officially begin its season with two pre-band camp rehearsals in the coming weeks. Band camp will commence the week of August 22nd at the high school. Uh, when the Marching Band and Guard put on a long week of intense rehearsals to learn uh, the 2016 fall show. So it's a very intense kind of a boot camp kind of thing. Uh, the Music Theater Boosters will be changing their name officially at the end of the summer. It will become Chatham Performing Arts Boosters. Come September, they will continue to do fundraising. Uh, this particular booster group does fundraising K to 12 to support the performing arts throughout the entire district. Whereas the athletic is split between two different booster groups, um, but all all three of those groups are to augment and support their their various programs. That's the music theater report. Uh, Education Foundation. Ms. Kenny's not here. Recreation. Um, I sat in that meeting for Mr. Gilfillan, and there was nothing specific to the board. They went over their summer programs and talked about registration for their fall programs and everything um, is status quo working with the administration on field space and with their liaison, Ms. Nauta. Uh, PTO, they're very happy with the arrangement. Everything's going great. PTO district cabinet, Ms. Cronin is not here. Any, other, any questions on any of the liaison reports? No? Good to go. Um, I make a motion to move the meeting of June 20th, the public session and the executive session. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? No abstentions, I hope. Oh. Excellent, thank you. We have our first opportunity for public commentary, and then once that's complete, we'll move into the agenda items, and then there's a second opportunity for public commentary at the end. Not a big fan of sunscreen or umbrella there, to be honest. Obviously, you didn't follow your. What's that? Looks like you have a nice tan. Yeah. We had our one week of vacation. Yep. Jersey Shore. It's really nice. Um, anyway, uh, Libby Hills and Rath, Chatham Borough. Mm. I just wanted to comment on uh, the curriculum tonight since it's on the agenda. And in particular, the high school freshman and sophomore U.S. history um, curriculum. Um, there's a textbook that that's listed in the curriculum uh, for the for um, U.S. history, and there's also a book called uh, A People's History of the United States by Howard Zinn. Um, and I wanted to just bring it up to the board's attention. So I'd like to quote from um, 
the book in his afterward section. Um, when he was asked how he came to write the book, he states that his own life experiences demanded that he try to, quote, fashion a new kind of history. He also admits that, quote, when I set out to write the book, I was heavily involved in civil rights movements in the South and 10 years of activity against the war in Vietnam. These experiences were, quote, hardly a recipe for neutrality in the teaching and writing of history. Another quote, I had no illusions, illusions about objectivity if that meant avoiding a point of view. Further concedes in a New York Times interview that his work is a, quote, biased account of history and says, quote, I am not troubled by that. Um, I'd also like to read two quotes from his book regarding the founding of the United States. Uh, one is how he describes the founding. Around 1776, certain important people in the English colonies made a discovery that would prove enormously useful for the next 200 years. They found that by creating a nation, a symbol, a legal unity called the United States, they could take over land, profits, and political power from favorites of the British Empire. In the process, they could hold back a number of potential rebellions and create a consensus of popular support for the rule of a new privileged leadership. Another quote from the book is, for instance, there is the issue of class. It's pretended that, as in the preamble to the Constitution, it is, quote, we the people who wrote that document, rather than 50 privileged white males whose class interests required a strong central government. Our school system on its website espouses and teaches the art of critical thinking and applies that concept across all curricula, including social studies and US history. On the STOC website, critical thinking standards promote, quote, clarity, accuracy, relevance, logicalness, breadth, precision, significance, completeness, fairness and depth as standards that must be applied in order to achieve critical thinking. Critical thinking requires that facts are learned, opinions of all side are, sides are read, and evaluated based on the facts, facts and conclusions are drawn. Given the fact that the author himself, Howard Zinn, says his book is a quote, biased account, I would ask the board to consider removing the book from the US history curriculum in the high school, or alternatively to add another quote, perspective or viewpoint of American history, in addition to pure unadulterated facts in a textbook. If we truly claim to want to teach critical thinking, not one way of thinking, I think it's imperative that the board review whether or not this book should be included as part of the curriculum. And I would also ask that the board respond as to whether or not it will consider reviewing this and why or why not. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public commentary? You sure? <laughs> okay, very good. We're gonna move on to the action items. Uh, personnel, I'm going to move action items um, A1 through A28, and then I'm also going to move action items uh, A29 through 32 on the addendum, which also includes um, some changes to the regular addendum. Just on resolution A4. Just on A4, that's right, I'm sorry. So the change to A4, as well as the additions 29 through 32. Mm. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Grant or Dr. LaSusa? No questions? Uh, Mr. DeCola, would you mind doing a roll call vote? Second, or did you step uh, out? I second. Oh, a second, I'm sorry. I thought you meant as soon as I get a second, I didn't realize you were so busy. Sure. <laughs> Just waiting, still on my chart. Uh, agenda items A1 to 28, or the addendum, the additional item for A4 and A29 to A32. Mr. Gilfo? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Connors? Yes. Mr. Connors? Yes. And Ms. Weber? Yes. Agenda items passed 5-0. Thank you. Uh, moving on to finance and facilities. Yes, like the move action item B1 through 16. Second. There we go. Rich had a second. Not very long, but they're more all around the uh, referendum. Um, just a couple of donations. One is the amount of uh, town high school PTO donation, $3,500 to take on 
half the cost of printing the student agendas. Do we still have to print these things? Why can't these be available online so we can save them? No, the agendas are where they put their homework in. Oh, is that what those are? The, like the calendar, like yep. the daily planners. Okay, I don't have high school kids, I haven't seen them. Um, it's lovely. Washington Avenue PTO donation. In the amount of $445 for a die cut machine. Which it is. And then, of course, the most important one on here is a matching donation. In the amount, because of all the hard work and wear and tear for Miss Weber, <laughs> her Bank oh, of America, in the amount of $250. Excellent. To be used for the book club. I know this is the volunteer grant that Bank of America allows us both to do. Oh, I split it between six months, every six months. And I, will, I will book it before the year is out. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm just trying to get <coughs> Mr. Franz. We both work for the same firm. Um, and my son Jack enjoyed the book club when he was in high school, so I thought I'd earmark the money that way because it got him to read, which is a feat in itself I've been trying for years. Well Any questions on those items for Mr. Gilfillan or Mr. Dequilla? No? Seeing none, Mr. Dequilla, would you mind? Sure. Agenda items G1 through 16, Mr. Gilfillan? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Connors? Yes. Mr. Connors? Yes. 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 Agenda items 10 and 5-0. Excellent. Moving on to curriculum, I'd like to move action items C1 through C9. Second. I'm going to correct you. We go. I have an move C1 through C8. Um, C9 is the oh, calendar. Yeah. That's not right. Okay. Oh, okay. C8 is the calendars? Uh, uh, so you're just moving C1 through C8. Calendars. Okay. C1 through C8 and an addendum of C3. Yes. Um, I have a question. The, okay. I'm sure this is a, a, a situation that's probably split down the center in terms of the acceptance of revisionist history and how we teach our children facts and how maybe these facts have become distorted for political purposes. Um, how do we go about picking books such as the one that was brought to our attention today and how are we making sure that there are both sides of the story taught where we have basically, you know, pure historical textbooks versus revisionist history and, and the influence of what I see is political, but you know, again, they're, in this town we'll probably split 50-50 in terms of how we should teach history. So how is, what is our process in terms of um, the books? Is it done by an individual basis? Is it done by the, the curricular leader in that, in that vertical? Um, how is it evaluated and what are our end goals in terms of making these decisions to bring in books that some people may find offensive, people may not agree, and, and I will tell you right now that as a, a parent, if, when, when I would, if I would see these books, I would not be overly pleased with, with this kind of curriculum unless there was a balance against it. Um, so what is our process on that? What is our reaction going to be? What are, what, are, what are the expectations? Because we're introducing things that, you know, in a, a town like this that may lead to significant parental um, pushback or commentary. Well, processes um, in all of our departments, uh, whether it's English language arts or social studies or science, the teachers and the departmental supervisor are the ones who primarily select the materials and then they use them in classes. Um, so that, again, that holds for the supplementary resources that they use. So if there's an article that appears in the New York Times about the coup in Turkey this weekend and if we had school in session right now, I would suspect that social studies teachers would probably be bringing some kind of um, primary or secondary sources into the classroom to discuss. Um, in terms of goals, et cetera, those are specified in the curriculum. Uh, this particular book, although I didn't teach it when I was a social studies teacher at Chatham High School, it was being taught in our U.S. History II classes. Um, and the goal is primarily to teach kids about perspective and that textbooks themselves are not necessarily objective uh, works it, that, that at least that's the position of uh, a number of historians that just the mere uh, historiography uh, of a given period has value judgments that authors apply 
when they are working with the sources that they're working. So the goal with, with this book and with others in the U.S. history, in all of the social studies courses at the high school, are, is to try to teach kids how to decipher um, how authors are putting together sources and what kind of narrative is being created. So that's done with all of the works. This particular book um, is not taught in its entirety. There are chapters that are uh, excerpted and then utilized in the curriculum. And that's the same with many of the, the social studies works in US 1 and US 2, at least. Can I just follow up on it, if I may? I, I, I may have misunderstood the, the question. Uh, is this a new author and a new book that's being introduced? No. OK. So Howard Zinn is the gentleman's name, Mr. Mm -hmm. Zinn? So a textbook authored by Mr. Zinn has been in our curriculum for years? Mm -hmm. OK. Yes. But in terms of the process, Mike, there's a there are the teachers, there's the curriculum leader. Mm -hmm. Who has final say over the curriculum leader? Would that be you? It would. You well, I would have final say. Karen would be the person who um, would the, the, the the supervisors report to the assistant right. superintendent for curriculum and instruction. Thank you. And is that the system that we've had in place for a number of years? Yes. So it sounds like there's a certain degree of checks and balances? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions on curriculum, either that topic or any other topic? All good. Mr. DeQuilla, would you mind? Yeah. Agenda items C1 through 3, I'm sorry, C1 through C8, including the agenda item on C3. Mr. Gilford. Yes. Mr. Hart. Yes. Mr. Connors. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. yes. Ms. Yes. Those agendas <clears throat> 5-0. Excellent. Thank you. Moving on to policy, Mr. Franz. Uh, I look to move addendum, agenda item D1. Second. Thanks for showing. <laughs> pretty quick on that trigger. Uh, does anybody have any questions on any of the policy yeah. items? Made this work. Uh, yeah. What's going to do? Well, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Extensions, no? 5 0, Mr. Call? For the record, the agenda item D1 passes 5 0. Okay, excellent. Um, the school calendar, do, do we need to discuss those? They're in the calendar, they're in the folder. Uh, we're going to clean those up and bring those back again the next meeting? Yep, next meeting. Okay. I would just like to bring up one other topic under board business. Um, I was looking at some many other boards, uh, school boards, and many of them, and we don't have to discuss it in great detail now, but I just want to introduce a thought of maybe a lot of the school boards do the, the first public commentary is reserved for agenda items only, so that members of the public, they can read the agenda over the weekend. If they have a question or a comment about something that's going to be voted on, the first public commentary is set aside from that, and there could be discussion on that particular item or, or items that are just about to be voted on. And the second public commentary session is reserved for any other topics that somebody might want to bring up. So it seems to be the prevalent format in many Board of Education meetings. I just want to present that as a possible option to allow for additional discussion on agenda items in the initial public commentary session and then go through the regular agenda and then leave the second public commentary session open for other dialogue. Um, this way we can respond. If somebody has a question on the agenda, we could respond to it without getting into too much detail on the on other stuff that's not on the agenda. And they have access to the agenda over the weekend. That's correct. And so you, your belief is that this would streamline um, and, and organize and... It just organize the meeting, but give also the public an opportunity to ask questions and have the board respond to things that the board is going to immediately take action on. Versus if we leave it all till the end, there was no opportunity to really respond to the action items on, in the agenda. Mm -hmm. But again, I was just trying to look at other boards, but Rich, you seem to have some reservation. My only concern is that some people have reasons that they have to leave meetings early, and they may want to say something and may not be able to wait until the end of the meeting. Okay. And I would want, I mean, you see people come and go, there's a whole host of reasons why people have to leave, and I think, you know, they make in the effort to come here. That would be my only concern is that. Then how about we only respond to agenda items and save our board response until the end for the same purposes? I, I just don't think we should restrict 
the, uh, the public and what they want to say, we can restrict ourselves. Okay. I mean, we have to be here until the end anyway, but I, I think if, if a member of the public comes and they up against the crunch, they should say. But then we should make it clear that we'll only be responding to certain topics and then okay. we'll be responding uh, later. Okay. would be my only suggestion. I mean, I have, I've given it no thought. Of right. No, I, we're, just, right. So we're just talking about it now, and I think we should talk about it yeah. again when the rest of the oh. board yeah, I'm all in favor of comes, comes back. I'm just trying to make it a, the most effective for, for, for the public as well as the board. Um, but I'm just, we'll throw it out there, think about it, and then when we reconvene with the full board, we can maybe suggest it again with the, the revised format that, yeah, I like you know, that. Um, as you said, anybody can say what they want. We may not answer until the end except for agenda items that are about to be voted on. Um, okay, I didn't have any other board items and board business. Um, anything, anybody else want to bring up? No, good. We have our second opportunity for public commentary. <laughs> Take your time. Don't rush. Well, thank you, everybody. I know tight of the summer is tough to, uh, to get here. Thank you for coming out. I make a motion to adjourn the public meeting. Amen. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We do not have an executive session. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Drive safely. Ooh, sorry.